Welcome to Cisco Modeling Labs. My name is Craig Brown, Technical Marketing Engineer at Cisco. In this presentation, we're going to look to add the NXOS image. We'll configure the settings and then go to the client, confirm the access from that image, and then also launch the image as well. So to get started, you would have launched your Cisco Modeling Labs server. And what you can see here in this example is I have my server as 172.16.150.160. And I've gone to the user workspace management. From here, I'm going to log in as UWM admin. And then I'm going to look down the left hand side. On the left hand side, you'll see uh, images and you'll see flavors. And we're going to address both of those. So we'll start with images. We'll go to images, click on add, and then look at the subtype. So for this subtype, we want NXOS. So let's have a look and see what the version and release number is of the image that we want to use. So if I come across, you can see I have a folder here with all the images that I've installed locally on my machine. And my image is going to be the 7.2 with the release 120. So we'll put in here 7.2 and we'll put release 120. Now the next question is, is where I want to uh, source the image from. So I can do it from a file on my server, I can do it from a URL, or I can do it from a local image. Now when we do it from a file on the server, that's referring to the file on the CML server. So in that case, it would be something in the slash home directory. From a URL, you can see you can specify your own HTTP URL, or from the local image. Now because I have it locally on my folder, I'm going to pull it from there. So we'll do browse and then we'll click on the image, Titanium. If we scroll down, and actually scroll down to the bottom, you can see there's a number of recommended settings. So for NXOS, it recommends CD-ROM, IDE, E1000, and two serial ports. If we have a look at what the settings that are going to be, what we want to do is we want to add these parameters in here. So config disk type of CD-ROM, hardware CD-ROM type of IDE, hardware disk bus of IDE, hardware VIF model of E1000 and then serial of 2. So we'll go back up to the uh, field where we put them all in, which is under the properties. We can type them individually or we can just paste them in. You can see here they all are. And then create. So the green message at the top indicates that our image has been created. If we scroll down, we can see the properties that we set, and there's the property values that we put in. So the next thing to do is to add our flavor, and our flavor says how much resources are going to be allocated to this to this uh, to this image. Now there's no direct correlation, so um, there's actually already a flavor in here, but I could create another flavor if I wanted, which I'm just going to do for this example here, and I could call it whatever I want. So in this case, what we're going to do is we're going to call this just my NXOS, just for an example. The amount of RAM that we want to give it is 3072, and the amount of CPUs is 1. And again, if you scroll down to the bottom of the screen, you'll actually see that's the recommended values as well. So we create that flavor as well, and that gets added here. So here's the My NXOS one that we created, and you'll be able to see that's pretty much identical to the uh, NXOS one. The difference just being the, the OpenStack ID. So that's the part you have to do from the administrator. The next bit is to go to the client and see if our image is there as a client. So to do that, we'll launch our uh, CML client and have a look at that. So here's my Cisco Modeling Labs client. The first thing I want to do is I'll have a look at the way it currently is. So I'll go to and open up a new topology file. And when we have a look here, we don't have an NXOS image specified. We have the default iOS, iOS VL2, and a server. If I come up to File and Preferences, and then Node Subtypes, we can do Fetch from Server, and Fetch from Server will it'll download these, these extra nodes for your palette. Now a user can fetch from the server and download these extra nodes for their palette. 
but unless you've loaded the image into the system via UWM, there, there won't be an image for the user to, to point to. And I'll show you that in just a minute. But what we can do here is we've fetched from the server these extra palette IDs. We can enable them, and I'm going to show you this example here where I've enabled ASAV, even though we don't have an ASAV image. You see here NXOS is also specified, and that's set to true as well, so that's going to show in the palette. Once I apply that, I have these extra images here on the left-hand side. So here's my NXOS, and here's my ASAV. So when I uh, specify, say, an iOS image, by default, when I go to Properties for that iOS image, the VM image and the VM flavor, they don't need to be specified. When I do a new image, when I add my own images into to my own system, as you will for yours, I have to go in and select the image that I want. So in this case, I'm going to select my NXOS image. And I'm also going to select the flavor. And we look at the different types of flavors. So there's the NXOS default flavor, which is here. And there's the My NXOS image here. If I come to the ASAV, you see there's no image name there at all. If I try and launch this, I'm going to get an error message saying image ASAV is not found. Because it's not, because it's not there. So we can delete that. Now if we go back to the ASAV one and we delete this and we try and do a, we try to launch the image again, we're going to get the error. So when you see this error, what this error means is that the image hasn't been specified. And the reason why it gets confusing is when you look at the iOS OV, uh, the, the iOS V image, the image is not specified there as well. As I said, the reason is, is because this is by default, this has been defined. We could actually hard code it ourselves by just putting iOS V like that and then giving it a flavor as well. So to make any image work that you've added in yourself, you do have to specify what that image name is. Now, just as an example, if I add in multiple devices, multiple NXOSs like this, we can select multiple and specify them all at one time. Before we move forward, the other thing I want to show is what you can do is if you have multiple NXOS images, so if I had multiple versions in here, I could specify a different version for each device as well. Now typically you'd go ahead and you'd add all the image connections and everything, but we won't bother doing that for this demonstration because we're just trying to show how to add an image. So we'll launch a simulation. And once we go active, we can then go onto the machine. And you can see here, here's our image loading. Now just as a tidbit, if you're curious how my window opened this way, instead of opening within, the, uh, within these little windows in here, is I went to File, Preferences, and under Terminal, Cisco Terminal, I said Detached. And by selecting Detached, it opens up a Detached window. So here's all our routers, they're all active, we can access them as we normally would. So this concludes the presentation. My name is Craig Brown, and thank you for listening.